49 through 52 really all deal with arith uh, arithmetic sequences. Um, so if you remember those from class, it was that a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. So for 49, find the 20th term in the arithmetic sequence and they give you a couple terms to start. If you remember what an arithmetic sequence is, this formula, then um, you'll, you can do it really quick. However, if you don't remember, you would have to keep going and list out until you got to the 20th term, which is possible. You could do that. It would just take a little more time. So when you're looking at an arithmetic sequence, remember that an arithmetic sequence means that there's a common difference. You're constantly adding the same number or subtracting. So let's look for that difference first. Here, negative 4 to 1, that tells me that I added 5. Then 1 to 6, oh, I added 5 again. So seeing this pattern, recognizing that it's the same change, that tells you that it's an arithmetic sequence. So you could just continue. You could just keep going. Plus 5, which would be 21. Plus 5, which would be 26, and so on. But it would take you a while to get to the 20th term. The other thing you could do is use the arithmetic sequence formula. So D stands for the common difference or the difference between the terms. D is 5. A sub 1 stands for the first term. And our first term in this sequence is negative 4. Then the only other th thing you need is N, and N is the, the term number you're trying to find, or 20 in this case. So plugging in everything I know, I would have A sub 20, which all that means is the 20th term is equal to the first term, which is negative 4, plus 5 times 20 minus 1, plus the difference times 20 minus 1. Simplify this. We're going to have negative 4 plus 5 times 19. So we're going to have negative 4 plus 5 times 19 is 95. Yeah? And then negative 4 plus the 95 equals 91. Your correct answer is D. Number 50 is also an arithmetic is also an arithmetic sequence, and that's what it's actually asking you to find. So again, you need to remember that arithmetic sequence means that there's a common difference. Look for a pattern, basically. From negative 5 to negative 11, what did I do? I took away 6. See if that pattern continues on for the rest of the terms. Negative 11 to negative 17, again, I took away 6. Negative 17 to negative 23, the pattern's still continuing. So because you're constantly adding or subtracting, this is an arithmetic sequence, and the common difference is negative 6. Right there that tells you the answer is D. The next three terms, let's see if those make sense. Well, if you continue the pattern, if you keep going, take away 6 from negative 29, you would get negative 35. So we can see that this is continuing on. The correct answer for number 50 is D. Okay, the wording on 51 is kind of tricky, and I think they do that on purpose. Danielle is going on vacation. She has already driven 60 miles in one hour. So that's already happened. Her average speed for the rest of the trip is 57 miles per hour. How far will Danielle, Danielle have driven seven hours later? That later, I think, is a little bit tricky. You're trying to figure out if, if you want to know how, many, how long she's driven for a total of seven hours or if we're talking about eight hours. I think we're talking about eight hours because she's already driven the 60 miles and then she's driving more. So how far will Danielle have driven seven hours later? It's kind of like after the 60. So you can make a table. Think about it. Hours, we just have to know that we're looking for really after eight hours because the first one's going to be 60 and then we're going to have seven hours of 57 miles per hour. So kind of like starting at, at like the first hour being one or the first hour being kind of like a zero. She's going to travel 60 miles then. Then after one hour on top of that, she's driving 60 plus 57, which is 117. She's going to keep going at the 57 place. We're going to just keep adding 57. If you do the first hour as one, you're driving seven hours later than the first. You're actually going up to eight. So you would make a table up to 8. 
Otherwise, you could do this as an arithmetic sequence. The equation would be this. The 60 is your a sub 1, your first term. The, the um, 57 is your difference. And the n is 8 because it's 7 hours plus the first hour. So we could use a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. Or 60 plus 57 times 8 minus 1 or times 8 times 7. You're doing 7 additional hours to the original one. So whether you actually do the arithmetic sequence rule or you just make a table and keep going, you would just keep adding 57. 231 plus 57, 288, 345, 402. A lot of you want to, maybe, if you got this wrong, maybe you stopped there, maybe you circled A. But that's, that's only really seven hours of driving. She did seven hours later from the first one. So we need to add one more. We get 459. You do it over here, you're still going to have 60 plus 399 which is again 459. So either way, your correct answer is C. Again, I think the question is worded a little bit tricky here. I would rather it say, how far will Danielle have driven after seven additional hours, after the first, or after a total of eight hours being driven. So if you miss the wording on that, take a good look at it. Since it says later, we have to assume it's the seven hours after that first one. Okay, 52, another arithmetic sequence. Tim's scores for the first five times he played a video game are listed. His scores follow a pattern. Which expression can be used to determine his score after he played the video game n times? So look for a pattern. I can see from here to here. I would maybe subtract those on my calculator. Um, I get a 73 difference. Then check to see if that same pattern exists here. If it doesn't, you'll have to look for a different pattern. Maybe try dividing them or maybe try multiplying by something. But here, every time, I'm adding 73. So this works. That means, that it's a, that means it is an arithmetic sequence, which if you remember is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. D, the difference, the 73, is your d. So I'm always adding 73. I want to know what the pat or what his score would be after playing the video game n times. So I'm just going to leave n in there. And the only other thing you need to remember to fill in is the a sub 1. And that a sub 1 is your first term. So this is going to go in right here. So I'm going to have 4,526 plus 73 n minus 1. Now, looking at the options here. None of those match. Okay, so start simplifying it. Take it step by step. See if we can find one of those that's equivalent to what you wrote. I would start by distributing the 73. So I would have 4,526 multiply see if that's anywhere on there. That doesn't match anything either. Okay, well what's the next thing you can do to simplify this? Oh, I have some like terms I can combine. Add those together. Now look, is this answer somewhere? Yes, here it is. Your answer is A. <clears throat> if you didn't know how to do this problem, a more time-consuming way, but it would work, that you could use to do it is, is put in these numbers, put in 1, see if you get this, put in 1, see if you get this, put in 1, see if you get this, put in 1, see if you get this. So right away by putting in 1, you could rule out D. Um, put, it, put in, put in 2 then and try it and see if you get the second term. Then put in 3 and see if you get the third term. So you could just keep trying until you figured out which equation would work as well. If you remember the arithmetic sequences, that will help you.